Welcome to Unit 1 of Machine Learning. Um, in this unit we're going to just kind of look at an introduction and overview of machine learning and get you kind of set up with the course and um, the software we'll be using in the course. Uh, so this uh, first overview we're just going to be looking at machine learning stuff. Here's the video that you're going to be watching now and we're going to link into um, these three different um, resources. The first one is a link uh, from Google that uh, does a quick introduction to machine learning. It's a pretty good uh, video, uh, I think. Um, and then it's part of a series, so you can go on and watch uh, more videos. I was down at uh, Google headquarters getting some training on machine learning when I was developing this course. Um, and so I wanted to provide a link to some of the stuff Google does. In in many ways, uh, there are a lot of companies doing machine learning, but in, in some ways Google is pushing the envelope and doing some uh, really nice things with machine learning out there. Okay, so uh, one thing to note is that this is from Google, and uh, again, they're a for-profit company, and so they will, of course, uh, be looking more favorably about, upon their products and techniques too. But again, I think this is a relatively good uh, introduction uh, to this. So the first uh, five minute video is just what is machine learning. The second one is just seven steps in machine learning. Uh, and then it goes on from there. But again, if you watch the first one or two, uh, that would be a good place to start uh, for this course. Um, now next is this article uh, in Towards Data Science, which is an online site uh, that has a number of uh, resources here. And I find this is a pretty good introduction to uh, machine learning uh, for this. So let's just kind of walk through this. So um, this just kind of provides a general overview of machine learning. Uh, talks about some of the ways you can uh, learn machine learning uh, besides this course and um, so it talks about you know the the fact that we have so much data out there and uh, the data is really driving a lot of the stuff in machine learning the fact that uh, we have so much digital data there means that we can train we can use that data to train algorithms uh, to do different things and so access to data and training methods have been crucial and so we'll be looking a lot at those uh, techniques in this course uh, as we go. Um, so things like this being able to label uh, videos as you go and stuff like that, training uh, techniques for that. Now much of the data we'll be using in this course will look kind of like I guess we might call a spreadsheet. Uh, we'll generally call this a data frame in this course. Um, it'll be data that's broken up into columns. Uh, often we'll have headers at the top of the columns or names for the columns. And then there'll be rows and each row will be a different entry or a different item in that uh, data frame uh, here. So this is generally how uh, data is uh, set up in this course. Um, part of this uh, we generally will classify as features. Uh, these are information we might know about the data. And then we'll often have label or uh, say that, that one column or some something we're going to try to predict uh, from the data. And so in this case uh, they're looking I think at different positions um, that people uh, have, you know, what the position name is, how many years of experience they have, what country and city they're in, and then we also know the salary. And so the question is, given this other information, these features, can you then predict the salary if you know the city, the country, the experience level, and the name of the position, how well, how accurately can you predict the salary from that? And so that's kind of the general function we'll be doing, is looking at data that's kind of broken up this way. Uh, in as we go. So when we're looking at machine learning, we'll be largely talking about two different ways of doing machine learning, supervised and unsupervised. Um, now there, the, this article breaks deep learning up as separate, but really deep learning is just a more advanced version of supervised learning here. So we will be looking at, at deep learning, but again we'll group that under supervised learning. And in this course, 
In this course, we'll be doing more work in supervised learning than unsupervised learning. And most of the interesting work in AI in recent years has been in the field of supervised learning or kind of semi-supervised learning sort of stuff. Um, but we will look a little bit at, uh, at unsupervised learning also. Okay, so what is supervised learning? Supervised learning simply means that we have data and we have labels to data and we're going to train our algorithm to uh, learn that kind of method. So the idea is that we have some data, uh, training data with labels. So for example, up here, this is what we're talking about. We'd have this training data, the first uh, five columns here, and then we would have something uh, label something how we want to categorize or some numeric value we want to estimate based on that data. Uh, and in this case, it's the salary uh, here. And we have a bunch of this sample data ready for us uh, to use in training data uh, here. So we have a bunch of training data and a bunch of labels. We feed that into a machine learning algorithm. The machine learning algorithm looks at this uh, each training data element again and the label again <clears throat> refines the algorithm again and again and eventually through some techniques we'll see it creates its own predictive model so now it's looked at this data and learned from it and now if we have some new data that this learning algorithm never seen before we can provide that new data into this predictive model and it'll predict the results so in the example above maybe we have um, uh, uh, some data it hasn't seen a, a, a develop like maybe you're getting a job and you can put in your city your experience uh, your job title and it will try to predict your salary from that so now with this sort of model there's two kinds of predictions we can do uh, one is called classification, where we're trying to predict a class of elements or a class of ideas uh, Basically, it's categories, not numeric stuff. And the other uh, area is where we do regression. And regression is where we try to compute a numeric value. So, for example, I'm going to scroll back up here. <clears throat> and this, this is more of what we would call a regression uh, model where we're we're not trying to uh, we're trying to predict a numeric value uh, for these features and there are common ways of doing regression analysis here um, that we'll look at and then and there are more advanced ways uh, that we'll look at for machine learning for trying to do regression uh, prediction so regression is numeric predicting numeric values here where uh, classification is maybe like up here where we're trying to classify uh, this is a person and this is a person and so we have persons and stores and street and um, benches and maybe um, uh, maybe traffic lights and cars and bicycles and stuff like that. So we have different categories uh, where our data will fall in. So again in supervised learning we have this classification where we'll try to assign categorical classes or labels uh, to items. Um, and then, so like here, we might have some data like all the red circles might be one type of data and all the green values might be another type of data. Maybe these are um, uh, certain types of flowers and these are non-flowering uh, plants and then we, we have some measurements uh, across these axes for both and we have some new data point in here and we're going to want to say is this this type of plant or is it this type of plant uh, f uh, for this. Um, so again we're just trying to assign a category to it. Now regression is when we're trying to assign numeric value uh, for this. Um, common way you may have seen before is what is called linear regression where we look at our data we try to plot a line fit a line to it and then we use that line to calculate the values and so here we might be given an x value and calculate the y value from that now that those are both types of supervised learning again where we have a whole set of what are called labeled data we might also have unlabeled data so unsupervised learning might uh, we often talk about a technique and this is what we'll look at here is called clustering um, so maybe we'll see a bunch of uh, movies 
uh, here and we want to cluster the movies together and we don't the movies aren't necessarily labeled as uh, action or comedy or drama or whatever we don't even know what the categories are those might not be the right categories from it and so our job is to look at a bunch of data related to um, like movies and then figure out how they cluster together uh, for this so we might have um, this characteristic of a movie and this characteristic of a movie and then um, here the algorithm has grouped or has clustered these movies together based on these two different criteria like maybe this is the amount of violence in the movie and this is the amount of swearing in the movie or something like that uh, and then we'll see these movies and you know in our mind we might have some knowledge like maybe these are more like action movies and these are more you know Com comedy movies or something like that but again the algorithm doesn't know that it it doesn't have labels for this it's trying to assign uh, clusters for this and then once we have clusters of data uh, if we have some new value in here or we might be able to recommend uh, recommender systems are a good example of clustering systems where we can say oh this is a product that's very similar to other products you bought uh, so you might want to consider buying this product uh, for this so now related to this uh, they work this in unsupervised learning uh, and it's somewhat related but not that much related we'll break dimensional reduction into its own little category here but we will look at dimensional reduction and um, what we often look at is data that has multiple different uh, features and we'll kind of extract just the important features uh, from that data so maybe we're um, looking at um, movies and uh, maybe we have you know a hundred different characteristics of a movie different stars actions types of dialogue uh, where it was produced uh, how long it was uh, we have all these different dimensions or features for each movie and then we'll try to reduce that to a set number of features so here's kind of on a, a visualization of this maybe we'll have we have this sort of data that's in three dimensions and then it's really hard to, to classify or to extract out who what data is what but if we reduce this to just two dimensions it's easier to see visualize and it's easier to draw a line here and differentiate between some of the categories and some of the other categories of this data so we'll look at dimensional reduction uh, and how we can use it to work with our data and again this article talks about deep learning as a separate field but this is really uh, largely tied into um, supervised learning and we'll look at neural networks and how neural networks are set up and deep learning simply means that neural networks with multiple layers on him so rather than a neural network which is three layers here we have five layers of neurons here we will look at uh, neural networks and deep learning that might have 20 or 100 different layers uh, to them um, Reinforcement learning is another area and we will not get much into reinforcement uh, in this course and talk about how that works, unfortunately. Uh, there's limited stuff we can do in our systems and so we'll, we'll, we've got to select what we want to do and what we, what we can cover and what we can't. Here's a good overview of our systems we're generally be using oops, uh, for this. We'll have some data, uh, both uh, the raw data and often labels for supervised learning. Um, we will break that data up into what is usually called the training data set and the testing data set. And then we'll only use the training data set and the corresponding labels, feed those into our learning algorithm and have it process away on those. And then we'll create a model. Then we'll take this test data, which was not used for training and feed that into our model with its labels see see if it can predict the labels and evaluate how well it does is predicting those labels uh, here and then we might go back and adjust our training uh, feed our training data in again with some different parameters uh, and try to create a new model and then use the test data to evaluate is this new model ever be better than our previous model uh, will be and do this and eventually through this looping process we'll end up hopefully with a final model that's pretty good at predicting even with data that is not seen before and then uh, we'll use that and as our production model and then we can take any new data and feed that in and it will generate predictions for us.
Okay, so again, this is a pretty good article here. Uh, I went over it briefly, but again, I, I suggest you actually read through it and pay attention to it uh, here. Now, the next thing we'll be looking at is Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, we'll be using Ju Jupyter Notebooks in this course. And this article just talks a little bit about Jupyter Notebooks and how they work. Now, how are we going to be using Jupyter Notebooks in this course? So I'm going to get out of this uh, Unit 1 overview and then go back here uh, to Unit 1. And in Unit 1, um, in every unit we'll have a learning activity and that will be provided through a Jupyter Notebook. So there'll be a learning activity here and then in, uh, every unit will have a learning activity and every two units uh, will have a large project due. And that'll also be done through a, um, a Jupyter Notebook. Uh, so um, I actually suggest that you actually jump down to this uh, learning one activity and work through that. That actually will walk you through uh, this article on Jupyter Notebooks while you have a Jupyter Notebook open. Here's an example of that learning one Jupyter Notebook here. Uh, the, and some information and it again stops, goes through this same introduction to Jupyter Notebooks in that. Okay, so as our overview, once you get down to this section on introduction to Jupyter Notebooks, you might want to start reading this, but I suggest you actually go back to the learning activity and start that up and go through the learning activity. The learning activity will walk you through uh, introduction to Python, the language we'll be using in this class, introduction to Jupyter Notebooks, and Colab, Google's Colab, which we'll be using to run our code for this course, uh, and kind of just walks you through this basic uh, setup. So. Look forward to this course. Hope you enjoy it.